we will uh, now uh, move on to the, the, the second talk uh, and the second speaker in this, in this uh, panel, uh, who is also our, our host, uh, Professor Ahmed Yekuk. Um, uh, uh, he is a, a lecturer in the Turkish and Middle uh, Eastern uh, Studies Department at the University of Cyprus. He obtained both his master's degree uh, and his PhD from the University of Cyprus. Uh, he is the author of the book, First Serialized Novel in Turkish Cypriot Literature, A Glance, uh, which was published in Turkish by, by uh, the, the publisher Günce in, in Ankara last year. Uh, his research interests uh, include uh, modern Turkish literature, Ottoman Turkish literature in Cyprus from the 19th century to the present, uh, and also Uh, literary theory. Uh, uh, today he will be talking about bitter accents in Elif Shafak's The Island of Missing Trees. Thank you, uh, dear Lord. This paper is about uh, the latest novel of Elif Shafak, uh, titled uh, uh, The Island of Missing Trees, uh, which was published in 2021 by Wicking Penguin in England. Uh, it has not been translated into Turkish or Greek yet. However, it has been translated into German, French, and Spanish. Uh, in my presentation, I will share my views with you on the reasons why translating it into Turkish and Greek uh, presents more challenges than usual. Uh, primarily, I would like to show you the plan of my presentation. Also, Uh, firstly, I will speak about my theoretical framework and methodology, then I'll share with you my research questions. Afterwards, I will speak about the writer and the a bit. Then uh, I'll share with you a brief analysis of the novel in terms of politics and structure, then conclusion will follow, and at the end I will share with you some bibliography that I use. In my paper, I used a sociological approach and took into consideration all the following, uh, all these uh, points, uh, like the era society, author, literary work, reader, consumer, and or researcher, which is me, uh, the intention of the author, response of the reader, consumer, researcher, and the dialogue interaction between the social ideological background of the author and structure of the text. Uh, here is my such questions. Uh, what could be the reasons that motivated the author to write a novel on the divided island of Cyprus and its Turkish group inhabitants? Could you mention that there is a kind of relation, loose or intense, between the ideology or the political views of the author and the structure or the spirit, literariness of the novel, the island or missing trips? And now Elif Shafak is a Turkish-British author. Uh, she is a Turkish-British novelist, essayist, public speaker, political scientist and activist, and a novelist. And also she is well known as a scholar, a scholar who wrote her thesis on politicology and teaches, has taught at universities such like Middle East Technical University, uh, University of Michigan, University of Oxford. And, as an essayist and speaker who defends the, hum the human rights, uh, women's rights, freedom of speech, and mutual understanding of different cultures. Uh, in her speeches, Elif Shafak states that what she tells in her novels uh, should be evaluated within the world of fiction. The discourse of literature and politics are quite different. She aims to give space to different voices, not similar ones, in the literary world, which she describes as storyland, and the taste of the word storyland is freedom, in her opinion. Okay. Uh, before commencing, I would like to briefly mention two different literary texts that came to my mind while I was reading the novel in question, and the reason for this is because all these works have common elements Uh, elements, and these are nothing else other than human dignity and grief. Firstly, 
I would like to refer to one of the most famous ancient Greek tragedies named Antigone, written by Sophocles. And uh, the myth of Antigone in Sophocles' plays uh, is about her endeavors where her brother Polynices, because of her devotion, devotion and loyalty to the gods and her family. Polynices had been killed in a battle with his other brother, Eteocles, uh, uh, in defiance of King Creon's orders, who was her uncle, not to bury Polynices. She buries her brother in the dark of the night, and the Goni is imprisoned into a tomb. After hearing the threats of the blind prophet uh, Tresias, Creon decides to release her, but it is too late as she had hanged herself in despair. During human history, as you know, people buried their relatives or friends after they passed away. And this tradition, which is more a necessity really, still continues today. Those who think that uh, they are doing their last duty to their loved ones, in this way, find consolation up to a certain point. Briefly speaking, a burial with proper ritual according to traditions is a human right. But due to communal or natural conditions, the bodies of many people who have deceased cannot be handled in such a way at certain times. Sometimes those who hold power and sometimes ordinary people who are guided by power or some fascist ideologies prevent the right of deceased persons to be buried. Violation of this right has been and continues to be one of the subjects of literature from ancient times to the present day. Following this, I would like to quote something from contemporary Cypriot literature. This is a poem written by Turkish Cypriot poetess Senem Gökhan. I will share with you a part of the poem named Wells of the Island, which is directly related to the recent history of Cyprus and therefore a cause political messages and criticisms in the background. In this poem, it is stated that many individuals lost their lives due to the violent clashes that broke out on the island and those who were lucky to survive were exposed to psychological traumas, traumas due to the stark realities they had to face indirectly. In other words, there are references in the poem that point directly to historical realities that official history is hiding. The poem's restless and uh, melancholic poetic persona, perhaps, psychologically affected by recent testimonies or events narrated by others who had first-hand experience with the actual events, says, to get into the kitchen for a glass of water and to drink it quietly sip by sip, without suspecting that it was drawn with buckets from those wells, from wells where stray bodies supposedly were thrown with all their stories. If we ask ourselves, who are the stray bodies that have been thrown into the wells with their stories mentioned by the female narrator of the poem, then we can find the answer in the book titled Beneath the Carob Trees, The Lost Lives of Cyprus published by the Committee on Missing Persons in 2016. And those missing persons were the result of intercommunal clashes between Turkish and Greek Cypriots. And as you see the quotation from the book, their remains were thrown into wells, buried in secret, unmarked graves, or simply left in the battlefield. Interestingly, Daphne, who is one of the main characters in the island of missing trees. <laughs> Works for the committee of missing persons in the novel. Furthermore, the author mentions at the end of the novel that the information that she had acquired from the book titled Beneath of the Carob Trees 
the lost lives of Cyprus. Now I would like to talk about the main characters of the novel and the types of bonds they have they had with each other. In the island of missing trees, Elif Shafak takes Cyprus and Cypriots to the center of a fictional world. It depicts a segment uh, from the tragic and traumatic history or stories of the island and its inhabitants. However, she constructs a narrative structure which attracts attention to the particular traumas which were unique to the island, but which were also experienced elsewhere in the world in some way or another. She emphasizes that Cypriot casualties and victims of violence that occurred during clashes between ethnic groups were also experienced in civil wars in Spain and Latin America. But the author does not only focus on ethnic conflicts and wars, she also, she also brings forth the creatures from the natural world with which we share this planet. And the fig tree in particular is focal to this story. She develops remarkable literary strategies in order to create awareness among the readers as far as our endangered ecosystem is concerned. At this point, it should be emphasized that the third person singular narration and the first person similar narration are used together in the novel. And when I say first person narrator, I am referring to fig tree, which occupies an important place in the novel. Yes, in the novel, a fig tree comes in front of us as one of the main heroes. It tells us about the late history of Cyprus and provides us with details about the lives of the characters. In the novel. It shares with the reader both its observations and knowledge it has learned from other living creatures such as butterflies, flies, and mice. But the victory is aware that no narrator can be objective in the true sense of the work. I'm now quoting from the novel. What I tell you Therefore, I tell through the prism of my own understanding. Undoubtedly, no storyteller is completely objective, but I have always tried to grasp every story through diverse angles, shifting perspectives, conflicting narratives. Truth is a horizon and underground plant stem with lateral shoots. You need to dig deep to reach it and once unearthed, you have to treat it with respect. We can say that Shafat tells us about a forbidden love story in this novel. It is true. It is inevitable not to have this impression at first glance. If you would briefly speak about the events, we can say that Greek Cypriot Kostas Kazanjakis and Turkish Cypriot Defne, both living in the same district in, La in Nicosia, fall in love with each other. They begin to meet secretly without telling their families. However, they find it difficult to find a suitable place to meet. And this is, of course, due to negative reactions they most certainly will have to face in case their families find out about their romantic relationship. Yorgos and Yusuf, and I, to open a paragraph, uh, parenthesis, Yusuf is the Arabic equivalent of Joseph. Joseph was one of the biblical uh, Jacob's 12 sons who was thrown into a pit by his brothers. Uh, so, so they are owners of the tavern named Happy Petri. Uh, welcome them. They let them meet in, a, in the tavern away from praying ice. Right in the middle of the tavern, there is a fig tree growing out of the ceiling towards the sky. And this tree knows about everything that has happened on the island. 
through people and other living creatures it has come to contact with. As the plot becomes clear, we witness the uh, revelation of a secret. Uh, the relationship between Yorgos and Yusuf is much beyond a business partnership. There is a love affair between the two men who are both in their 40s. And here, we experience a different kind of forbidden love. However, it is absolutely impossible for their homosexual relationship to be accepted or approved by the patriarchal Turkish and Greek Cypriot communities. In the end, both relationship between Defne and Kostas and relationship between Yorgos and Yusuf are dangerous enough to cause deadly outcomes. The novel does not go into too much detail regarding the relationship between Yusuf and Yorgos. However, the fate of these two men resonates throughout the novel as one of the main building blocks of the novel. In the subsections of the novel that focus on the past, we learn that inter intercommunal conflicts affect Daphne and Costa's relationship in a negative manner. His mother sends Costa's to England, where his uncle is living, in order for him not to be killed in the war. As a result, the young couple separates. The violence that took place in Cyprus in 1974 in an environment dominated by uh, diametrically opposed Greek and Turkish nationalisms, and the subsequent division directly affect the lives of these heterosexual and homosexual couples. The two, uh, two of Costa's brothers, one leftist and the other Greek nationalist, being members of the EOCA organization, disappear. It is implied that they may have been killed by the Greek Cypriot organization, EOKA, or the Turkish Cypriot nationalist organization, TMT. Previously, Costa's grandmother was also shot dead by British colonial soldiers in 1956. This was unjustified, and it was the result of a misunderstanding. Following the anti-colonial uh, colonialist actions of a group of Turkish Cypriots, Hence, it is understood why Costa's mother pushes him to emigrate to England as he was her only son remaining alive. She had three sons. Uh, the bus carrying Daphne's father and uncle is stopped by Eoka E. As a result of a dispute during identity control, Daphne's uncle is killed right there. Her father is injured during the attack and he has to spend the rest of his life semi-paralyzed. At that point, Daphne learns that Kostas has left Cyprus without telling her as if the emotional breakdown she went through was not enough. She finds out that she is pregnant. Under the circumstances, she could not tell her parents about her condition. Therefore, she tries to find a way to have an abortion. Yusuf and Yorgos help her. However, ethnically unknown ultranationalist Cypriots who are aware of the couple's love affair attack the restaurant and kidnap Yusuf and Yorgos by applying violence. Following this event, nothing is heard about Yusuf and Yorgos, meaning that they are also added to the, to the list of missing persons. In 1994, Kostas comes to the island, to the northern part, to be precise, trying to find Daphne. He learns that Daphne works at CMP, the Committee on the Missing Persons. This committee makes excavations at various points to search for 2,003 persons whose names are on the missing persons list. Bones that come out as a result of excavations are given to their relatives. And what follows is a DNA test to find who belongs to who. After the procedure, the procedure is finished and the bones are identified, 
they are buried in the soil again, according to the traditions. When Deathland forced us meet again 20 years later, the love they had for each other rekindled open wounds as a result of the disputes between two communities in Cyprus were not healed yet. Division on the island continues and no lasting peace is achieved yet. Neither the family of Kostas nor the family of Daphne approved the decision of the couple to get married. Therefore, they find the solution of residing in Milan more safe. They have a girl, they call her Ada, which means Tur in Turkish island. However, during the period when she stayed in England, Daphne does not break her bond with the Committee of Lost Persons. By communicating with Cypriot families immigrating to England, she continues to gather information for, from them for the lost persons that are waiting to be found. She gets depressed by the negative attitudes of some Cypriots who choose to remain silent rather than helping her. Daphne and Costa's daughter Ada, on the other hand, knows nothing about her parents' past. She has a lot of questions in her mind for which she seeks answers. The efforts of Elif Shafak to be very careful with the subject, to hold equal distance from all parties and to create an impartial discourse while using actual historical events as a material for the novel is remarkable. The author often uses literary method such as uh, the familiarization. Uh, the novel points towards metafiction. It draws the reader's attention from the plot to the creation of the text. Sometimes we notice that more than the actual plot, what comes forth are the details of the actual writing of the story. This is more evident where historical events are narrated. And this is where we notice the author's effort to present more perspectives than one. In her speeches, Elif Shafak states that what she tells in her novels should be evaluated within the world of fiction. Uh, so oh, I have mentioned this part. So now I want to quote from the text and the finish song. Uh, as you see here in this part of the novel, Costas, uh, who was then in London, is listening to the radio news in order to learn about the developments in Cyprus uh, on July 1974. And now I quote. He could glued to the radio to catch the latest reports, words, quote, and blurred as much as they revealed and explained. Invasion, said Greek sources. Peace operation, said Turkish sources. Intervention, said the UN. The articles spoke about prisoners of war, ethnic partition, population transfer. Here we see how the author uh, balances uh, the different uh, point of views for the same event. And now I want to share with you another uh, quotation from the book. It's written uh, by a hotel manager, Greek Scott Hotel Manager, to the British customers. The letter. So, we hope you have had a pleasant journey back home and that your stay at the Little Palace Hotel was an enjoyable one, up to the unfortunate moment when the Turkish invasion broke out on Saturday, 20th July 1974, for which I am sure we will all have a memorable experience. And close, please find your hotel invoice to the amount of for which an early start settlement will be much appreciated. And yeah, I want to uh, emphasize that in the whole novel, only in this page, the writer herself uh, felt the need to put a footnote. But I would like to remind you that this is a novel, not an academic essay or anything else like that. So we see how uh, she was aware of the possible uh, negative reactions uh, of maybe Turkish readers or Turkish authorities on the subject. Some of that is some of Turkish readers on the subject. And here's my conclusion. Elif Shafak often points out that the storyline provides freedom for both the writer and the readers. 
but while she is constructing a formal and dispersive structure of the island of Cyprus, it is obvious that she has in mind the possible negative reaction, reactions that the novel might create from the British, Turkish, Greek, and Greek or Turkish Cypriot readers and the book market as well. That's why she did not limit the subject of the missing persons with Cyprus and has also mentioned the people who had similar fate in countries like Spain, Latin America, etc. However, in my opinion, one should not overlook the fact that the biggest pressure she felt came from the Turkish authorities. The reason for this could be her previous experiences, since she had been accused of insulting Turkishness because of the words that her fictional character uttered in her novel, The Bastard of Istanbul. And here is my, some of my biography. And thank you very much for listening.